Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video, well, we're going to take a look at a Taguchi Robust DOE. We're going to take a look at a case study. I've got to be honest, I've been making these videos for four years. I've had this case study sitting to one side. I can't believe I've not recorded a video on this before. Just before we start, just a reminder about the books, folks. The links are in the comments below. Uh, if you're a green belt or a black belt and you want practical advice on how to do your work, not how to do the mathematics, how to do your work, Drink Tea and Read the Paper is the book that you should buy. If you're interested in more detailed analysis on design of experiments, design of experiments for 21st century engineers, and finally, if you're into small batch manufacturing and you haven't implemented SPC, you should do. Here's the book you need, Statistical Process Control for Small Batch Production. So, there, all the links are in the comments below. Please go and buy the book that you need. So let's go on and talk about Taguchi DOEs with a robust element. And let's look at this case study. So it's a Taguchi DOE. By the way, the technique that you're about to see, the robust element can be done to any DOE. I made a video um, a few days ago. Uh, it will be on my channel. Um, I will leave a link right at the end of this video to it that explains uh, robustness, the Taguchi style. Um, I will leave a link to the video if you want to know a few more details about how exactly this case study works. But let's just give you a reminder of what we're going to do. We are going to take a DOE pattern. Obviously the factors in the DOE pattern here, these are controllable. There'll be things like time, temperature, pressure, things that you can set on your process. But the robust element, and this is where the Taguchi technique wins hands down, will be to be uh, robust to variability that you cannot control, you cannot set it high and low very easily. And therefore you can't put it in a can't put it in a test. You can't put it here in the normal test array. So where does the where does the robust variable appear? Well it appears in your data collection as a noise variable. So let's say this was outside temp what you would simply do is do your DOE three times. So maybe you would do this data collection at a cool part of the day, three o'clock in the morning. You would do another repetition of the DOE. at a medium temp, so this would be low temp. This would be medium temp, and then we come back at the hottest part of the day when the temperature's at the highest, and we would collect data like that. So we've allowed noise this way across the data table, something that you would never do normally if you're doing a normal DOE. Then what we do on this end, we analyze the standard deviation. So in other words, we analyze the variability. And if we get changes in the variability, maybe low variability here, maybe high variability at the top. What this is telling us is that when you had these settings in play, there was very little variability across the three sets of data. And if there was very little variability across the three sets of data, that setting is more robust to outside temperature. Okay, so that's the basic way that the, the, the technique is done. Um, and just a reminder, you don't have to attach this technique to a Taguchi DOE. You can do, and the one I'm gonna show you is a, an a, attached to an, a Taguchi L12, but you could have attached it to a full factorial, a half fraction. 
It, it doesn't matter. This technique applies to any design of experiments. It is not just a Taguchi technique. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at this case study that, I, as I say, um, to be honest, this case study is 20 years old, but it is a fantastic example of robust settings and what you can do when you know how. So the example is from the electronics industry. So if you happen to be a company that places components on an electronic circuit board, uh, surface mount technology in particular, uh, then this might be specifically for you, but the idea of robustness could apply to any process. So the process is placing components on a circuit board and it's gluing them in place prior to the solder process. So when you do surface mount, unlike old technology where we used to push legs through the circuit board and then put solder on the back, surface mount allows for miniaturization, allows for mobile phones to be created, etc. Uh, surface mount technology, you place the components on the surface. The surface has a copper pad. You place the component on the appropriate copper pad. You glue it in place and then you take it off that gluing process through a solder process and you solder them in place. So that's the basic process. You can see here, look, here's the list of the variables that we are going to test in this process. So we have glue type, we have two, two suppliers, Loctite and Horias. Horias are the current supplier. We have the dot size, maybe more glue might give us stronger strength. Incidentally, something I didn't say, what we're interested in here is glue strength. Because the problem we have is the components drop off the board before we get them to the solder bath. So we're trying to make sure they are glued to the surface properly. And that's what we're looking for here, glue strength. So we have glue type, we have dot size, maybe more glue gives us a stronger uh, bond. Uh, we've got ultraviolet heat. Now ultraviolet heat is our current solution. We've been advised that if we play ultraviolet light onto the components, we'll get a stronger bond. So we're gonna test that on or off. We just wanna see if it makes a difference. We're not testing a level, we're not testing strong heat and weak heat, we've gone on or off. Because if it doesn't do anything, we can switch it off and save money. Zones, we've then got three temperature zones, one, two, and three. And we've selected high and low temperatures for each and then finally, we've got conveyor speed. So maybe if we go faster or slower through the oven, then maybe uh, we'll, get, we'll get a better bond. So there are the seven variables. Our output is glue strength. And you can see in this picture, we have this little meter where we can uh, prise the component off the board and we can measure how strong the glue strength was as we did that. All right, so there's our seven variables at two levels. So because we've got seven variables, seven variables, two levels, my personal DOE of choice there is the Taguchi L12, because in 12 runs, I can test what these seven variables do. Now let's talk about the noise. Now the noise in this case is in this little picture here. Look, you can see the, the picture and you can see the component size. So you can see this big chip, this integrated circuit. We would call it a block ceramic. Um, it's about, uh, what, 40, 40 millimeters, uh, 30, 40 millimeters square. It's got an awful lot of thermal capacity, uh, an awful lot of thermal mass. Uh, so when we're going to warm that up to cure the glue, we've got to warm the parts up as well. But then you've also got these tiny little parts look close to it, which, is, which are chip resistors. So tiny little resistors, which are just a few millimeters square. So a tiny amount of thermal mass. We've also got the thermal mass of the way the board is designed. So sometimes you're putting components in a very densely populated part of the board. 
sometimes the parts are in a very empty part of the board therefore there's there's lots of local thermal mass or there's very little local thermal mass so that's our noise our noise is thermal mass okay and pretty much if you try to figure out how to deal with thermal mass the engineer would throw his hands up and he would say well it's noise there's nothing I can do the designer just designs a board nothing I can do about it I cannot come up with settings to deal with this well this robust DOE is going to do exactly that and this is the key if you know the tool and the physics is in your favor you can find answers here answers that no engineer in a hundred years of experience would ever know so here we go here's the thermal mass so what we're going to do is this we're going to create the table exactly like this except the noise traveling across the table here will be the thermal mass so we'll take big slash little components we'll also take um, populated the population low and high so lots of components versus very few components so we'll end up with four data tables we'll end up with a large component in a very sparsely populated part of the board a large component in a um, a very busy part of the board and the same for the small component small component on its own small component in a busy area so you can see here look we've done the DOE and we've got we've got 16 columns of data so not three columns of data that you see here we've literally done 48 data points for each of the areas and now what we're going to do is a very simple thing we're going to put those four sets of data together like this and then we're going to analyze the standard deviation across the whole set and if we can find ways of turning the standard deviation down of making the process more consistent despite the thermal mass we have robustness now we've carried out we've carried out the analysis and you can see the results that we got here so in order to control the uh, standard deviation you can see the analysis we have three of the variables that will drive the standard deviation to be better the first one is the glue type now the better supplier is Loctite now they happen to be cheaper by the way so this solution is going to save us money not cost us money so glue type is a better glue switching the ultraviolet light off actually makes the bond more consistent and that's a surprise Sony where this um, this case study took place at this point in their uh, history they were spending ten thousand pound on ultraviolet bulbs alone so it's ten thousand pound straight in the pocket not to mention all the electricity that we're going to save and then finally on the variation we've got zone 3 now we're gonna to have to spend some money on zone 3 because it's telling us to get zone 3 to the highest okay so that's what's driving the variability so what we can do now is dial those three settings into the process and then test the capability of the glue strength now of course we can also optimize the glue strength make the glue a little bit stronger maybe and let's look at the three variables there so we've done the analysis and again we've selected three variables that move the mean again it's glue type 
So again, it's Loctite. They're stronger as well as more consistent, as well as cheaper. We've got glue dot size. Well, you'd kind of expect that. More glue, stronger bond, I guess. So if we put more glue on, we're gonna get a stronger bond. And finally, we need to get the conveyor speed down. So we need to put more glue on and we need to put a bit more uh, heat, take it through a little bit slower. And that's what's gonna optimize the average. So there's the two analyses, really important. It's come from the block with all the noise across the data. And then what we're going to do is a capability study. And here is the capability study. You can see, look, the broad, the broad capability study. This is the beforehand setting. Then we've just dialed in the best settings for variability and strength and we've run a capability study for those four areas and you can see the second uh, capability study I think it's just around about nine sigma nine sigma yeah people think six sigma is hard to get if you know these techniques like robust DOEs you can smash Six Sigma if the physics is in your favor. Now look, the process is slightly off center. We're at nine Sigma. Some of those settings have cost us money. So maybe we could ease down on the dot size. That capability, of course, would drift further towards the left-hand tolerance. But at nine Sigma, there is no danger of any defect rates here. So. You know, this, this robust DOE was fantastic. Lots of the settings were cheaper. And finally, the last thing that was brilliant about this case study, these settings were capable of running every single circuit board in the company. Prior to this, every circuit board had a unique thermal profile. Every circuit board, the engineer would spend weeks trying to find the best thermal profile when we had a new model. When we changed over, we had to wait for the thermal temperatures in the ovens, etc., to even themselves out. So there was a setup time. Once we had these settings, there was no setup time. There was no development time. We could simply put any circuit board through these settings and it would work. Now that is a Taguchi robust DOE. So when engineers say to you, I can't get rid of this variability, there is nothing I can do. If you know the right mathematical technique, and this isn't even difficult to do, Taguchi designs are very simple. This analysis was just a graphical analysis only. If you know the right techniques to do, you can find out the most fantastic things about your processes. By the way, you can find out things that your competition will never know. And then you can smash the competition out of the water and you can make bucket loads of cash because that's what Taguchi Robust DOEs do.